Do you have a talent? Have you discovered your passion in life? Are you good at something? Really good at something? Really, really good at something? Well, you're not as good at it as Nigel Richards is at Scrabble. Nigel Richards' talent is paralleled if you took the sports skills of Tiger Woods and combined them with the knife-wielding expertise of Gordon Ramsay and the high-speed driving edge of Lightning McQueen. Okay, wait, that would... That would just make O.J. Simpson. Bad example. My point is Nigel Richards is obscenely good at Scrabble. Ridiculously good at Scrabble. Inhumanly good at Scrabble. There's a lengthy list of achievements ramshackled onto Nigel's big dick belt, and I'm going to try to list them in the order of what I consider to be the least to the most unbelievable. And believe me when I say it, look me in my fucking eyes. What this guy has accomplished in the realm of board game based spelling bees is unfucking real. First off, Nigel Richards has earned a whopping $225,000 playing professional Scrabble his whole life, and that's really not that much in the grand scheme of things. Actually, that's pretty reasonable if you ask me. Yeah, I said I was going in order from least to most shocking, so we gotta get the kind of boring stuff out of the way. As of this video, Nigel is currently sitting at a 75% win rating. If you failed elementary fractions, that means he wins about three out of every four games. In comparison, Magnus Carlsen, who's currently the highest ranked chess player in the world, only has a win percentage of 42.15%. Nigel has a win percentage that's almost double of arguably the greatest chess mind of all time. Now, I know some of you eggheads out there are going to try to argue, uh, but Hugbees, that's because Magnus has a 42.68 draw percentage. It's far easier to have a draw game in chess than it is to have one in Scrabble. Magnus has only lost 15.17% of his professional games played, which means he's got a beneficial record percentage of about 85%, which is better than Nigel's. Well, listen, here's my rebuttal. Fuck you. Suck my fucking dick. Shut the fuck up and stop talking. Let's compare Nigel's Scrabble Smackdown to a more applicable set of mind games. Collectible card games. Think about it. In Scrabble, you draw from a randomly sorted bag of tiles to control a board to score more points than your opponent using a set of legal moves. In training card games like Magic the Gathering, you draw from a randomly sorted deck of cards to control a board while figuring out the best way to explain to your parents that you'll never be fostering any grandchildren because you haven't washed your penis enough in the last five years for it to serve any function beyond spreading yeast infections. According to the Magic ELO Project, which is a website designed to use the ELO ranking system to assign who's the biggest nerd in the Magic the Gathering Pro scene, all of the highest ELO ranked players have a win percentage of only about the low 60%. I will concede that there's no real one-to-one -one game comparison for Scrabble to properly measure the skill level that Nigel exudes, but let me use some more examples to hopefully sink in the message that Nigel is a god of the Aether Realm sent here to show us how demigods arrange their small plastic tiles. At one point, Nigel's Scrabble rating was so high that the gap between him and second place was the same as the gap between second and 20th place. Fans, journalists, Nigel Hollicks, and opponents say that Nigel has a perfectly photographic memory. And according to an interview with Stefan Fatsis, fellow Scrabble expert and a man whose last name just needs the word ass jammed in the middle of it to describe what I had sex with last night, he told me that if he actually hears a word, it doesn't stick in his brain. But if he sees it once, that's enough for him to recall the image of it. I don't know if that's a photographic memory. I just think it's something that his brain chemistry allows him to do. Scrabble's a lot like the good whiskey in the cupboard. If you accidentally make a mess of it on the floor, then your stepdad's gonna smack you in the mouth. But it's also a lot like chess. Planning your next move ahead is the bulk of the strategy. Nigel not only has a memory better than a goldfish in an opposite contest, but he's gotta have some inherent high-end mathematical skills to boot. 538 is an analytical website that wrote an article on Nigel Richards, and they have a fantastic quote on this concept that I'm going to steal because this is YouTube and I can plagiarize shit all I want. This isn't for a grade. 
For living room players, Scrabble is about language, a test of vocabularies. For world-class players, it's about cold memorization and mathematical probabilities. Think of the dictionary not as a compendium of the beauty and complexity of the English language, but rather as a giant rule book. Words exist merely as valid strings with which to score points. And speaking of valid point strings, let's talk about how Nigel operates on a fifth dimensional plane and consumes his opponent's optimism for nourishment. During the 1998 World Scrabble Championship, well before Nigel had established himself as the master of the game, he was facing down a board like this. His tiles on his rack were C, D, H, L, N, R, and a blank tile. Well, look at that snazzy spot down there at the bottom. If you swoop up that E, that looks like a pretty swanky way to spell children, if you ask me. Not only would he be picking up that double letter score on the I, but he'd get a 50 point bonus for playing every one of his tiles. What a brilliant move for the Wizard of Words. Too bad Nigel's a fucking literary necromancer because he actually spelled out chlorodyne. You know, chlorodyne, an early 19th century drug made from opium, cannabis, and chloroform, which had to completely change its formula and name to the J. Collins Brown mixture because too many people were getting addicted and dying from overdosing on it. Chlorodyne, that household term. Oh, and that also got him id, phi, and n, and required him to weave in between walk and oiler. Now, maybe you're starting to get a bit cynical of Nigel's lexicon domination. Well, Scrabble's official dictionary at the time didn't contain the word chlorodyne because it didn't contain words longer than nine letters because that shit happening is so uncommon. Nigel had to remember this word from the actual big boy full dictionary in order to play it. And he had to see that he could validly play it on the entire minefield of the board state. What a fucking hero. I can confidently say if Nigel was alive during World War II, Hitler not only would have unconditionally surrendered, but he would have personally gotten on his hands and knees and scrubbed America all nice and shiny and new like you see in those old cartoons because he didn't want to be obliterated to the fifth dimension of German spelling. Obviously. And obviously, a true winner like Nigel isn't going to settle for just winning real good and going home and fucking his good winner wife. He's gonna make sure he wins the hardest he could and do it a bunch of times. There's many high-end Scrabble championships that Nigel has trophies in, but let's talk about the granddaddy of them all, the World Scrabble Championship. It's the most important championship in the English Scrabble world. Nigel has, of course, claimed victory in this Thunderdome, winning it all in 2019. Now, quick note, the World Scrabble Championship's currently on hold until mid-2023 because of COVID, but that's okay, because Nigel also won back in 2018. And that's very impressive, because no one has ever won the World Scrabble Championship more than once except Nigel Richards. Although I only told you a half-truth here. Nigel didn't win the World Scrabble Championship twice. He's won it five times! since 2007. And if he had won in 2009, he would have claimed victory four years in a row. Oh, and by the way, in 2009, he didn't win, but he got runner up. There's plenty of other earth shattering plays to proclaim Nigel the most exciting player in Scrabble. But personally, my favorite Richard's reproach was his opening move of a match during the 2014 Canadian Scrabble Classic, where Nigel immediately commanded enough board position on his opening move that his opponent conceded before playing any of his tiles. Nigel spelled out, I am Nigel Richards, go fuck yourself. But nothing, and I mean nothing, will ever compare to this next achievement. And I do mean absolutely nothing. The next year's winner could do it naked while flaunting her pussy in front of the judges during the winner's ceremony, and it doesn't matter. It will still be more boring than what I'm about to tell you. Scrabble, as you'd imagine, is played in a multitude of languages, with English, Spanish, and French being the most popular. Fun fact, Scrabble is actually pretty dang popular in France. The French language World Scrabble Championship was actually created before the English one. French Scrabble is known to be notoriously harder than English Scrabble, as the English Scrabble Dictionary only has about 200,000 words, while a typical French Scrabble Dictionary has almost double at about 386,000 words. In 2015, 
Nigel Richards won the French Language World Scrabble Championship. He doesn't speak French. He did it by memorizing the French Scrabble Dictionary, which he did in only nine weeks. And then, and fucking then, he did it again in 2018. And to this day, he still doesn't speak French. <laughs> That's not even the most impressive thing about Nigel Richards. I told you I was saving all my talking points in order of least to most impressive. Here's the most unbelievable thing. The most impressive thing about Nigel Richards is that he doesn't give a shit about Scrabble. Nigel rarely, if ever, gives interviews, and a lot of the info people glean from him is sound bites taken from interviewing other pro Scrabble players. They've mentioned that no matter how high the stakes are of the tournament, he rarely shows emotion. He, and I quote, exudes a constant calm and reacts the same whether he loses or wins a match. He's even admitted to them that he doesn't care about the outcome of the game and only enters Scrabble tournaments just to have something to do. The most unbelievable thing about Nigel Richards is that he is undeniably the absolute best in the world at what he does. And that means nothing to him. He doesn't kill himself practicing every day to make sure he stays on top. He doesn't bleed with competitive anxiety and stay up to date on the competition. He doesn't compete for anything other than a desire to play Scrabble. In one of the few direct quotes Nigel offered in a promo video for the 2011 Scrabble World Championship, he said, I'm not sure if there is a secret. It's just a matter of learning the words. I understand that being the best Scrabble player on earth isn't going to get you a bunch of interviews on late night talk shows. It's not going to get you endorsement deals with Adidas or an entourage of hot bitches. But it's still a competition with thousands of other entrants all the same. According to his friends, Nigel is an avid cyclist. He rides his bicycle everywhere, even to a lot of his Scrabble tournaments. He's mentioned that his goal in life is to ride a bike across India. That has nothing to do with Scrabble. We live in a world today with less pure artistic expression than ever before. As the internet continually grows and flattens out, more and more content launches onto it with a distinct lack of soul, and entire businesses, professions, and personalities arise from trying to create things for the express purpose of virality and profit instead of the joy of creation and the passion of imaginative motivation. That's not explicitly a bad thing. It's inevitable as the tools to do these things become easier to use and get a hold of, and the world inevitably streamlines. And being able to profit on what you do will always come with conceits, and it's better than the alternative of not being able to dedicate yourself to it fully. But all I want to say is, I'm not easily impressed by things. I'm downright defiantly, stubbornly cynical. But Nigel's humility, preventing him from doing anything about being the best in the world impresses me. Before I go, here's a little bonus list of some other classic Nigel Richards plays. He once added hyphen in hyphen law to mother to create mother-in-law by placing two eyes sideways to make the hyphens. Using two blank tiles, he spelled out triple X which is of course a word referring to explicit material. Not many points for using blank tiles, but an impressive play for sure. Speaking of blank tiles, at one point Nigel covered the entire board in blank tiles, preventing his opponent from making a move. During a tournament semifinals, Nigel was looking to spell power, but he didn't have a W tile. Instead, he spelled it like this, P-O-W-E-R. He lost two points for not having the actual W, but he managed to secure the points. And if you want another tricky W play, Nigel's next word in this match was vacuum. But notice that M on the end there. That's right, it's an upside down W, which is worth one more point than an M. That extra point secured him the win. And that wasn't even covering the W he snuck in again in the middle there. Another strong opener for Nigel was he spelled out zero times zero, which is a valid mathematical equation. 
and a pretty good point value for such a short word. And finally, Nigel once placed down the word Ohio. Some onlookers were confused on why he would utilize such a low value word, but then he told him to move to the side of the table, and ta-da, Nigel suddenly earned double points on that one.